Hi, my name is Cornel Saramat. I'm the technical support and application manager for G Lighting Controls. Uh, today I'm going to introduce our new system, which was launched in January this year, is uh, the Lighting Control, a modular type system called Light Suite. This system is a revolution in our line. We used to have larger panels. This is the first one where we specialized smaller modules for different functions. And I will go and highlight some of these modules that we have installed in this panel here. Yeah, it can be designed specific for applications, so we don't have to uh, come with larger bill of materials that require for that job. It's saving money in this way, and uh, it's also scalable, so if the job has to be initially started with a lower functionality, but the building is also uh, developing or they need to add extra functions, they can just plug in extra controllers to enhance the system features. Uh, some of the features I'm going to go through. The modules that we are going to in, in, introduce in this system, a group switch module is handling eight programmable inputs. They are relay modules. Each relay module can handle six relays. We have a dimming module, which can handle four dimming channels, zero 10 volt controls. And also we have some field devices. Um, is a touch screen and a programmer which can be installed either in the panel or remote in the field is a password protected programmer and we have also some programmable data line switches I'm gonna go through that in the next few minutes I'm gonna go a bit more in detail so um, on the group switch module every single input is uh, programmable as an analog type input so we can land in a photo cell or uh, an occupancy sensor or can be a switch type input is selectable with a jumper uh, Every input into this panel can control any number of relays into the system. The relay module has also um, is handling six relays plug-in type. Each relay has a push button that it can be overridden at the board. All modules are plug-in using wings on the backboard. Connects to the other modules using the jumpers and the relays using the plastic connectors. So they can pull, be pulled in or pulled out. So there are two versions of the relay modules. Some of them have uh, switch inputs. These ones are non-programmable. They are actually controlling one-to-one. -one. So switch one controls relay number one. Uh, and we have an option without switch input. So if not requiring that application, uh, they are controlling larger groups of relays the group modules will handle the controls so then we can save some money and pre, uh, offer a version without those uh, terminals. The dimming module has four channels. Each um, uh, channel has an analog input for photo cell. Uh, can be uh, standalone channels or they can be programmed also to work as an offset so we can have a single photo cell to control two or three channels set up with 10 or 15 foot kind of offset. So if you have a classroom you have uh, the row by the window set to one level, the middle row is going to be at a higher level and the row by the wall on a different level. So a single photo cell can handle everything. The system, it can be um, laid out in a, for a very simple application, doesn't require any uh, programmer. So all programming, let's say for a box store, can be done just by pushing buttons at the controller. So to create zones, like uh, any of uh, larger retail stores, usually building automation provides a set of contacts for four or five zones to control lights, like pre-sale, uh, sale timing, or cleaning. And so one zone could be for outdoor lighting. Just by pushing the button and selecting the relays allowed to program the system. So contractor installs the panel, is programming, and building automation is coming with the dry contacts, and the store is up and running. The system can be expanded um, in multiple panels, so you can have uh, these type of configurations. Uh, we have four dimensions, 12 relay panel, a 24, a 36, and a 48 capacity. All of them are coming in 14 inch width, but they, the height of the panel can, uh, it's going to vary depending on the size. Multiple panels can be connected together using a CAT5 connection. Uh, communication between these devices and panels will be uh, using CAN bus, which is a protocol coming from auto industry, a very fast communication protocol. So 
up to 99 of these devices spread in different panels can be connected to one network. Also, the network length could be up to 3,000 feet. If we exceed any of these limitations, we can add uh, a controller. It's a backnet controller, allows to connect um, different subnets together using either building TCP IP or, or Ethernet communication. Also, this provides um, functionality through a computer front end. So if a smaller system requires a computer for programming and controlling, we still have to install the backnet controller. The nice part of it is like a system could be installed in smaller application using a touch screen that allows to do the full programming. Then if needed to add the backnet controller, whenever this is plugged in, it will learn the whole network configuration. So it doesn't have to be programmed. Just plug in, learns the whole network, and then the information is brought on the computer. You can just change anything um, through the software. Information resides, is redundant, resides in the controller and also in the field devices. So pretty safe from that point of view uh, for failures. The touchscreen programmer has uh, two functions, can program the whole system and also runs um, schedules, time schedules for, for um, the entire system. There are up to there are eight schedules on uh, on the task screen. If uh, the application requires more than eight schedules, we can have multiple task screens on the same network. The task screen allows to troubleshoot the network and uh, add. If in case we need to add new devices, we can find out what addresses are available. So our um, network screen it will display all the devices which are installed in the system. They have different uh, color codes for different device type. For example, the first one here is the group switch, a darker gray color. Then we have the relay modules 10, 11, and 12, which are green, blue, green. And then we have the dimming module, orange color. Network switches, which are a lighter blue color. The data line scheduler, which is this unit here, darker blue, and then the yellow, the backnet controller, which is installed into this network. So in case if any of these devices goes offline, it will turn red, so it's going to indicate a failure here. The screen allows to program different time schedules. So for example, if we pick any of the schedules, we can edit the event. We can change the time. Once we saved the event, it can be copied to different days of the week. And also, we can add relays. When we add relays, we select uh, the object, like a relay panel in this case. We can pick the relays we want to associate to that schedule, and then click Add. All the relays will be displayed into the screen. If a relay needs to be removed, select the relay and the remove button. For the system setup, the options will be to set up the address of the display, which is under the can ID function. It can have any number between 1 to 99. In order to run uh, the astronomical functionality, which calculates the sunrise and, sunrise and sunset for every location, we have a location button that allows to either manually enter the latitude and longitude, or it can be selected from a library. Like we can select the region, and within the region, we can pick up the city, Las Vegas. So now the system knows that it's installed in Las Vegas, and it calculates the sunrise and sunset for every day of the year for this location. But beside the regular timing schedule, uh, the system has a capability of creating offsets, like so-called store scheduler. So let's say the store operates from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. as an example, but we know that the cleaning crew comes uh, one hour earlier or, or the merchandisers to set up the, the stuff on the shelves. And at the end, the pharmacy can open probably two hours later after the store opens, and the pharmacy can close earlier. At the end of the day, the cleaners are going to come probably to, to 
finish the, or clean the, the store. So you have the capability of creating offsets from a, a main schedule. So you can say, all right, my schedule will be eight to five, but this group will turn on one hour earlier, will stay on two hours later. So in, the, in that situation, you need to use only your single schedule. Or if we have a high rise, multiple floors, and very often um, the utilities and actually even the manage building management requires to have floors to be turned on in sequences, not to have a begin rush. So you have at least one minute apart to, to fire the floors. You can use a single time schedule for the whole building and create for all, all the groups for each floor one minute offset. So in that situation, again, you're using a single schedule out of the eight. Uh, classical uh, older type systems, you would have to define a new schedule for every every of these floors, which would create a bit more um, com uh, complex uh, programming uh, issues because if you do a change, instead of changing only one single schedule, you have to change, let's say, 10 of them for 10 floors. So that's a, a good feature of this system. Down the road, somebody wants to add a device into the network. This is the place where you can find out what address is available. So they can just find out what is available, set the device with that address, and plug it into the network. Uh, for programmability, allows to select any of the devices in the network and you can do a full programmability of the device. You can create groups, you can define uh, inputs, uh, set a foot candle for photo cells, calibrate photo cells. So if I um, have the photo cell installed into a, an interior office, it's very important the surface below the photo cell, so a bright surface is going to reflect more light, a darker surface is going to reflect less light, but we would like to um, create in their office um, to maintain, let's say for example, a 35 foot candle. So it's important that we can calibrate that photo cell to read closer to that value. So the system allows to do a calibration. We can come with a light meter, we see the reading of the photo cell, we can input the um, readings from the meter, and the system automatically is going to calibrate to uh, show the right um, reading. Um, for motion sensors, if we use occupancy sensors to any of these inputs, the system allows to set up time delay um, through the controllers instead of actually relying on the time delay on the sensor. Advantage is that uh, if you want to change it, you don't have to climb the ladder and, and uh, open the sensor. You can just come here and you can change your time delay. Also, uh, sensors connected to the programmable inputs, they can be disabled during daytime. So if you have now, um, if you have a large open office, you wouldn't like to have lights to flicker in one zone because nobody's moving around there and coming on in the other zone. It creates a, a, an impression that something is wrong with the lighting in the area. So you would like to enable the sensor only after hours. So during daytime, sensors are disabled, and uh, after hours, they become active. So only if somebody walks through or works later, it's going to bring up the lights on in that area. For um, larger um, parking structures, for example, another application of this uh, motion sensor control is actually instead of turning the lights on and off, we can um, dim them. So instead of turning the whole floor in the dark, when there's no motion, lights can go down to 10%, which is going to provide the minimum lighting. As soon as somebody comes in one zone, it's going to bring the lights up. And it's very um, helpful even for the security that is uh, taking care of the building. As soon as the lights are, are coming brighter, the cameras can be focusing on that and automatically they realize that somebody is coming there. They can pay attention to what's happening in that, that area. So the system allows, uh, is very flexible for different type of applications. And um, like I said, it can be built application specific. We don't need to add extra hardware if not needed. We can provide space if required and then they can plug in uh, modules. One thing I wanted to highlight, all the modules are plug-in type. So actually they just snap into uh, a couple of wings on the board, connectors, the connection between the modules are using um, plug-in type connectors. Relays are also plug-in. And all the input wires are using spring terminals as well. So it's easy to add or to uh, replace any of the controllers. If uh, any of the um, functionality has to be changed, it's so easy to, cha to change the controller out, out in the field.
A unique feature on this uh, system, our programmable network switches are configurable from the software. So you don't, it's not critical if you got a wrong uh, configuration of the switch. Like they can come in one button, two button, four or eight button stations. But if uh, the application changed or the requirement of the location uh, changed to have different combinations, it can be updated very quickly through this interface. So I'm just going to show in a couple of screens how we can go here and we can change the number of buttons. So it's easy by just pushing this and it's going to give us different numbers. Also, the switch station can be set up as a, a switch with a locator light. So if you come in a, a dark space, you'll see a little LED indicating where the switch is installed. Or if it always is some kind of back, uh, backlight in the area, we can disable the locator. So that allows to save another few milliamps for that. But um, it has that feature available through the software. And now I will show you how the switch station looks like and uh, what we can program. So software allows to do a, a system configuration. Also uh, create graphic screens, custom graphics, which allows to do different type of controls. We can um, create, based on the runtime, can create trends and um, informational energy usage. Using the web component, we can actually create um, applications for iPhone or iPad that allows individual users to control their fixtures. In this situation, we are using a, a dimming for one of the fixture here in the a pole light fixture in the booth here. We're using the web application, we can create that iPad uh, interface that you can have individual control through iPads, iPhones, or smartphones. So at the end of the day, when the lights are going off, the user can do an override, or they can change a scene or a light level in their area. Based on the permissions, we can have access to time change time schedules or any other function.